Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of the one and only No Vacancy Live. Got an amazing guest today, all the way from Bangkok. Let's get started. I'm Anthony. Welcome to No Vacancy Live. That's my friend Glenn. You're watching the number one show in hospitality. Hey everybody, welcome back to No Vacancy Live. I am Glenn Hausman. Anthony Melcury is on assignment today, but we are doing this special episode. It's recorded because our guest is in another continent, all the way over there in Asia. In order for us to uh, make this work out without him having to stay up in the middle of the night, we are doing this uh, pre-recorded. Our, our guest today is the CEO of Labua Hotels and Resorts, which has great luxury high-end properties in Bangkok and in India. Take a look at this right over here uh, this is the dome property. We're going to get right into it, but we're going to talk a little bit more about hospitality. We're going to talk about life and philosophy and how creativity meets innovation. And that's the whole thesis behind a bridge not too far by uh, Deepak Ari. So let's welcome into the show right now. Deepak, so wonderful to see you. Welcome. Thank you, Glenn. Really appreciate you doing this. I feel humbled and honored. Really appreciate uh, I really appreciate you folks sending me the book, uh, which I read. That we're recording this on a Monday, and I, I digested 95% uh, of this uh, over the weekend. I got a little bit left to, to go, but I, got an, I know enough now, Deepak, to be dangerous. Um, and uh, I think it's really, this whole story is really interesting because it covers your journey, right? Uh, your journey from how, in my opinion, you kind of looked at things differently than everyone you were around. First, your peer group growing up, then later on, folks that you were working with. And that, to me, is a valuable, valuable lesson because so many of us seem to want to conform to what we think we should be doing as opposed to following our gut and our instinct to really be out there and innovate and recreate our own kind of journey. Did I get that right, Deepak? Definitely right. And I would like to add something here, Glenn. Yeah. It, it started, the whole book started as a memoir, mm -hmm. but the way it is written, it became the marketing book. And it became the book, uh, like Dr. Philip Kotler, father of modern marketing, has mm -hmm. recommended this as one of the five books in year 2023 to read. Uh, uh, it has become the part of curriculum at the Florida International University for the graduate students and for the executive MBA and for the entrepreneurship students. Wow. And the reason it has become a marketing book is because in this journey, what I've learned in a very simple language, I am sharing those experiences and telling people that experience over expertise matters in today's world. Yes. Right. Experience. I love that. And of course, uh, when you talk about FIU, you talk about uh, uh, Dean Michael Chang, right? Over over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael Chang, yeah. But he's in the hospitality school, so I'm talking about the graduate school. But yes, yeah. I'll be visiting Michael Chang. He's a great guy. Yeah. He's All a right, great cool. dean. All right. So let's talk about uh, experience um, and, and how that kind of melds with the thesis that I'm talking about. Experience is so important because that's really what people are looking for. And one of the things, uh, Deepak, that we've been talking about here on No Vacancy Live, and for a good chunk of my career now, is since the Great Recession in 2007, 8, 9 range, I really feel we've moved from that materialist economy to more of an experiential experiences uh, economy that rules. Uh, you were kind of at the forefront of that many, many years before we even really kind of made it a thing, right? You kind of had that vision before other people were really seeing that. Is, is that correct? Yes. Uh, see, uh, my life has uh, turned me uh, in a very different manner in this whole thing. So what has happened is that uh, when I was growing up right. in India, what mattered the most was expertise. Because at that point of time in India, if you're not a doctor, if you're not a computer engineer, and if you're not a scientist or a mechanical or electrical engineer, you have not done anything in your life. Right. And I started hospitality. And hospitality at that point of time was a different world. And why it was a different world? Because while I was studying hospitality in India, we were taught that broccoli is a green color, right. cauliflower, smaller in size. Right. Right. All right. So 
this is why I'm glad I had a chance to uh, read the book because you were a product of your community. You had not really seen the outside world. So when you talk about broccoli, you really didn't know what that was from a tactile perspective. You hadn't really tasted it. So um, in the book, you make very clear that you thought that it was just a, uh, you know, like just green cauliflower or something like that, but it's something completely different. And that kind of has informed you on experiences throughout, correct? Yeah. So I think uh, a lot of things uh, I've learned in the experience part. The most important thing in experience part I've learned, and that goes not only for hospitality, but for any other businesses about FOPO, fear of people's opinion. Yeah. And how do you convert FOPO into ROPO? That is the yeah. most important experiential part. Mm -hmm. So much so I've learned about experience that today I am teaching at FIU and what I'm teaching is experiential education. Also, I'm working with cyber. They are 15 cyber center sponsored by Department of Education. And I'm teaching experiential immersions to the professors. But how come someone coming from the hospitality go to the graduate school professors are teaching experience is because I had a lot of experience dealing with people. Right. So we become smart when we meet a lot of people. We learn from them. So at the end of the day, we learn from each other. Yes. So uh, that so on. this clearly shows that how important every individual, every person we meet. See, whatever we touch today touches us also. Yes. Yeah. And I, that's why I urge everybody who's watching this show that please touch positivity and happiness. Because when you touch positivity and happiness, it's going to touch you also. Uh, I love that notion of touching positivity and happiness and embracing that and having it become part of your, your soul. But that is such a challenge. You've, since you entered this career field in the 1980s, you've had some incredible highs. You've had some insane low lows that would make some of us rethink our in, entire, you know, our entire lives and our career path over there. Um, what is it within you and something that you believe is within all of us that could get us out of the point of view that the world is controlling our experience as us being able to master our experiences within our world? When I was six years old, when uh, at, during that time, one road would divide rich and poor, I crossed the road right. and I experienced the Coca-Cola. And first time in my life, I saw a bedroom with the attached path. Right. And the innocent question I asked to the owner of that house is that when you get out of this, get up from this bedroom, do you enter the washroom without waiting in a queue? Or do you have to stand in a queue? And he laughed. He said, no, that's yours. You enter it. Yeah. And, and, and that told me something in my life that you don't experience anything in your life till the time you have the courage to cross the road. Right, right. And in your case, it was a literal crossing the road with a, a family that was wealthier that exposed you to new things that was across the uh, the street. Um, yes. Um, but then you're also talking about the non-literal sense of it and crossing your, you know, the world to get out of whatever psychologically is keeping you back from making those changes. How on earth, growing up poor in a village in India, did you combat everyone that was around you and said, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to go to Thailand and or Singapore. I don't remember which came first. Um, to, uh, Singapore came first. Singapore came first where you uh, worked at the restaurant. Um, yeah. How did you get the guts to go ahead and take such a big chance when you had had, you didn't even know what broccoli tasted like and here you're going to go to a foreign country. What was that experience like for you? And how did you, get yourself in the right head to accept that this is what you had to do to be successful. So that experience I got, uh, not because of me, but uh, my ex bosses helped me to move to Singapore. Mm -hmm. But while I was in college, I got my passport. And right. during that day, if you change the address, the address got changed. So, uh, so the address would be stamped on the uh, visas page. And I would be looking at that visa page and telling all my friends at the college that one day I'll be going overseas and I'll go to Fives. And everybody right. would laugh at me. Mm -hmm. I think in this world, I've learned one thing. I've never stopped dreaming. And also second thing, I've never stopped working hard to achieve my dreams. Yeah. And that is very important for everyone. 
dreams are to be dreamt provided you work hard to achieve it right because in this universe the most important part that stays with you is your unconscious and conscious mind and i condition my mind in a way that i work hard to achieve i dream of impossible and i achieve it when i was writing the book i was told that my book may not be published because there are many writers who write the book but they do not get to publish their work uh i was told i would never go overseas i went overseas and i faced a lot of challenges i didn't even know how to say 711 i would say 7211 and people would laugh at me but like i am fine. right now but yeah it's yeah, funny I, the, the restaurant i was working i got a booking from a company called jp morgan mm -hmm. and i wrote in the booking mr morgan two people and everybody right. laughed at me because to me i didn't know jp morgan is a bank so i thought right, mr morgan is an individual i wrote that name and did the booking but hey to be fair you know, tpac jp morgan was an individual you were just 100 years too late that's all you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so but but the part is all these mistakes were lack of experience or exposure yeah they were not lack of an individuality and they were not the lack of the confidence mm -hmm. and when people laughed at me what i didn't have was the fear of people's opinion right yeah that and that is what is helped me to I, I just want to talk about that for one minute deepak because sure. this is so important i think so many of us and now that you know i'm um in my early 50s i've realized that people's opinions never matter but when i was a young professional in my 20s i was so consumed with what other people thought personally and professionally that i probably missed out on a lot of opportunities because i got myself into a negative headspace worrying about what others were thinking was as opposed to being true to myself how did you find that place to not worry about other people's opinions when you're younger and impressionable and it feels like maybe it's american culture i don't know but everybody's opinions mean so much more when you're younger I think uh, I, I didn't mention about experience. Uh, yeah. My first job, I became the executive assistant to the senior vice president of hotels, mm -hmm. and then he resigned. And I right. saw how people change. Mm -hmm. When he was in position, how people would approach me, and when he resigned, how people would look at me. And that taught me something very important in life: mm -hmm. people don't matter. Right. Their opinion don't matter. Mm -hmm. What matter is your confidence and your ability to pick. whose opinion matter yep yes uh so and, how do you know whose opinion matters and who you should not follow because it's going to trample your your dream or goals i i think you have to look for you have to be genuine mm -hmm. to understand whether the other person is genuine or not right and it is a hit and miss mm -hmm. but you're 90% right you can't be 100% right and in life i've learned that you will you are lucky if you're 90% right because life the real world is very different than the fantasy world and to to look at the fantasy world i go to disney today mm -hmm. and to look at the real world i go to work today right <laughs> although to be honest when you're creating things like the the dome which is behind my head and uh you know you guys who are listening and not watching this uh, could look that up in bangkok you didn't have any template from which to create something like this so how do you cross how do you create that vision in such a way that you could get other people on your side to understand it and to give the viewers and listeners a little bit more context this is a rooftop bar it's on i think the 65th floor and when you created this there was hardly any of them in the entire world i think you mentioned in the book this is the fourth one that was ever created of this kind of nature so it was such an alien idea to the general public they immediately thought you were insane see you're right because we didn't find the interior designer when it opened nobody came and when we opened the sky bar only three people would go to the sky bar that was the first standing bar that is exactly opposite to the the, the blue circle uh where people uh, it was me the owner and her mother 
and uh, until we did the marketing campaign is when people started coming in mm-hmm. but how we created this thing is i'm a big fan of watching movies yeah i love watching movies and uh, while young i would see when i was young so you watch and you learn that uh, there'll be some hero drinking champagne in a glass that time we didn't have the glasses so we had steel tumblers at home and i would pour water in that and sip like that i said one day i'm going to be sipping like that and i'll have a car like that i'll be going like that and it all came out of the dream because uh, there was no interior designer who would do so the whole concept was given to the designer who was actually the office designer who became the hospitality designer right. so 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 in reality it was a dream that we wanted to live mm-hmm. and uh, there is no better fulfillment than living your dream no there's absolutely nothing better than living your dream and i'll tell you deepak i feel like so blessed by the universe every day because i get to do what we're doing right now talk to amazing interesting people i get to travel all over and have incredible uh, experiences so yeah i'm one of those people that is living the dream and i'm one of those people that didn't let others dissuade me and put me on a path that i didn't want to to go on but uh, how do you um, make sure that others buy into that dream and help you bring it to life? Because obviously you can only do so much on your own and you need help from this designer, for example. I think uh, uh, you have challenges. You have to, uh, uh, a story is when we were constructing and we were sh- running against the time there was a one design the one contractor agreed it was an international company then they refused somehow i met a person while having a beer in singapore i remember i called him can you help me or give me a guidance he happened to be the chairman of that company and he helped mm-hmm. us right. so so the point is uh, in this world there are two things which people don't know mm-hmm. when there are people against you you also gain people who are with you the universe is very fair when it it takes people away from you it gives people to you who help right. you right and that's what the whole universe about you is all about sometimes you feel bad i'm a human being right. i'm not going to say i'm tough glen and uh, there was recently an article about me which was a great article mm-hmm. it said the a bridge not too far the man who has the last laugh right. and uh, i thought there would be many people who would call me and my phone was not ringing Right. Then I had to call Anita, my wife, and I said, "Can you call my mobile phone?" And she called. The phone rang, and then I realized my phone was working, but my friends are not working. Right. <laughs> so, 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 so that's the connection that takes place there. Mm-hmm. So in life, life is never of gain. When yeah. you gain life, life is, you know, means it's like a a body. You take something, you have that much of space in the body. So yeah. so when you lose something you gain also something when you gain something you lose something is vice versa and one right. should one should be mindful of this one should also know that if you have it's your duty of dreaming and more important duty is to achieve your dream and right. that is what i urge everyone who is watching that show So you're all, you're almost talking about like the philosophy of yin and yang right with the opposing forces of energy and stuff like that and I know for a, a lot of folks that might sound hokey but I totally believe in all of that kind of stuff uh the giving and the taking makes a whole lot of sense because uh one of the things that I've been doing is um I've been trying to uh, visualize getting more speaking engagements and stuff because I've made a goal to pay for my children's I have twin boys that just started college I want to pay for their college education through speaking engagements right that's my goal so I'm trying to visualize all of that and bring it and actualize it and make it really happen um but I'm also I feel like I spent a lot of decades trying to be in tune with a lot of things how do you advise younger people when they lose something to have that positivity to be on the lookout for the stuff that they could gain as opposed to not recognizing it and letting those opportunities fade which would cause you to uh have a negative depression cycle and kind of continue to be internal and not be able to move forward the most important thing that young people should remember is they should never lose their self respect 
Second, they should have confidence in their own self. Right. Okay. Most of the time, that, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I think you say that because you've had some failures, but you've never considered yourself a failure. Like, yeah. it, it wasn't about you, it was about the circumstances. Yes. Right. Sorry. So, so the fa failure can never be you. You can never fail in your life. Failure right. is always the circumstance. And then people have to remember that. Third mm -hmm. thing, the younger people, most of us, like to copy people. We should not. We should be ourselves. We should be individual. You know, uh, I'm also bring people to their happiness. Mm -hmm. And happiness is very individual. It is within you. And professionalism and your confidence is within you. Yeah. If we try to copy someone, we are losing the freedom to fail. Mm -hmm. We are losing the freedom of our self-respect. We are losing our own self by copying others. So, so everything we have done at Labua or I have done in my life, mm -hmm. I've done without copying anybody. There may be many people who will be better than me. Right. And rather than competing with them, I rather learn from them. Right. There will be many people who are not better than me. Mm -hmm. Rather than looking down on them, I always give them a hand so that I bring them up. Right. And, and, and these things always help you. It's not a philosophy. It is a principle. Second thing, create an organization which is a hybrid of principles and rules mm -hmm. because rules takes you backward. But a hybrid of principle and rule take you forward. And that is very, very important. Could you give us an example? Principles I, I gave a very good example of principle that in our organization, we had this principle that we trust our employees mm -hmm. in a hospitality. Everybody has. We are not the first organization. Right. And we are not the last organization who says that we trust our employees. Mm -hmm. But here is the catch. We say, now when I say that we are the f one of the few organizations in the world right. that do not hire mystery auditor to come into our premises. Why? Because if we trust our employee, we don't need to send someone without telling our employees that we are checking on you. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we work along with our employees and our customers and create a customer satisfaction survey right. so that everything is open and we work with them. And the result is post COVID, our quarter three 2022 results and our January 2023 result, we have never done so well in the 20 years of history. It doesn't mean that we were doing bad. Of course, we did bad only for two years. That was the COVID year. Yeah, of but course. When, but we never fired anybody. The employees could see that we trust them. The power of being a team, that power of that happiness and power of that positive attitude can defeat anything and achieve anything in the world. Uh, and let me tell you, you have achieved some incredible things. For example... Uh, world's Best Hotel Restaurant, Mezzaluna, at the World Culinary Awards 2022. It also won Bay Asia's Best Hotel Restaurant. Uh, Chef's Table won Asia's Best Landmark Restaurant. You've got two Michelin stars at Mezzaluna, two Michelin stars this year at Chef's Table, a Michelin star uh, sommelier award um, in, at the Michelin, uh, for the Michelin Thailand uh, sommelier. Pretty incredible that you're working at such high standards how do you get, how do you keep doing that year after year to ensure you stay at those high standards without, you know, going crazy in those little details, which add up to so much? Glenn, I'm afraid of pain. Mm -hmm. In my position, yeah. chief happiness officer, CEO, mm -hmm. or this title position in any organization, we are there not because we are geniuses. Mm -hmm. We are there because we have the more endurance of pain than other people who are working in the same organization. Right. Having power with you and trying and keeping that, how do I say, uh, control over yourself, not to misuse that power, gives you a lot of pain. And, and failure, I've seen bigger failures in my life. And that mm -hmm. pain that comes with those failures is unbelievable. Yeah. And when you know that that pain is going to be very, very painful pain, you work very hard not to go to that path again.
Right. And that's what keeps you awake. That what keeps you motivated. It is not that I am afraid to fail. I am afraid to fail the team that is believing in me. Right. More than I am afraid to fail myself. So when that is the endurance of pain. Because when you become senior, when you have a lot of people working with you, it is never about yourself. It is about people who are there with you. It is mm-hmm. always about the people. It is also about the customers who believes in you, because right. you don't want to fail them also. And that's what makes you do the right thing. Right. But you guys operate at such a high level, um, and you have a, a sophisticated clientele. And by sophisticated, I mean in they know what they want when it comes to experience. So. Um, how do you continue to uh, satisfy them as we continue to move forward? Is luxury still fundamentally the same thing or are you seeing it kind of morphing into something a little bit different? So so I'll answer your question, Glenn, and a very good question. Thank you for asking yeah. this in two parts. Mm-hmm. The first is at Labua, we do not have a training and a marketing department. Mm-hmm. And we have outsourced this. Yes. And you know who we have outsourced to? Nope. To our customers. I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> you knew that? I had a feeling, but I didn't want to say it and embarrass myself. <laughs> so, so, so we have outsourced that to our customers. Yep. So they tell us where we lack because there's no way three people in a training department can dictate a multicultural society of employees and customers. That's right. So they tell us where we want to improve. And if we give them a great expression, a great experience, which is the equivalent of luxury. They believe. Now I tell you a secret, yeah. and that is a secret the whole world will know out of your show. Uh-huh. Metaverse has come today. But when in 2003 we opened our first restaurant, Sirocco, you mm-hmm. know, if and you look at course, our so restaurant, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, our restaurant is very simple. Our staff uniform is very simple. Our plates, tablecloths, everything is very simple. Do you know why? We have worked on a science. We worked on the conscious and unconscious mind. We have created a metaverse. We have created a dream. And that is why we retain the customers. Mm -hmm. So we don't break that dream of our customers by keeping everything simple. Saying is easy. Doing is very difficult. Because staying simple in today's world is the most challenging and the most difficult thing. And by doing that, The customers have a great experience. They have a great memory because 95% of the brain is an unconscious mind. And they go back and they never get something like that. We never wake them up. And and that is a power of science we have created. That is what we have done to create and design and manage our service processes. And this is what Labua is all about. Labua is all about a thought. A thought with the science creating wonders. We created something, added that with innovation, and where innovation was not possible, we improvised. Fascinating. All right. So tell me a little bit um, more about how you are able to focus on keeping things simple, because in a lot of things in life, you know, we have an expression here, don't overcomplicate things. People tend to do that, right? Because we feel like we need to keep doing stuff. But it must take an insane amount of discipline to keep it simple so it's relatable and you're able to keep delivering that that high level of service and experience. So what kind of mental checks do you do to make sure that it doesn't get out of control and become unwieldy? Uh, I, I think over a period of time, we have uh, created a clientele that is very elegant, that is very polished, and they like simpler things in life. Right. And uh, let me explain it to you in a very different example. Please. Have you ever been to a zoo or yes. a night safari? Mm-hmm. You have. And have you ever I've watched not been a, to a night safari, but I do want to go to Singapore because I hear they have a great night zoo. Yeah. So you have been to a zoo. Have you ever been to a watched a Discovery Channel? Of course. On a wildlife. What's the difference you see in a zoo and a Discovery Channel? Uh, you see an edited version that's pristine on TV, 
But if you're actually at the zoo, you see what the reality of it is. Usually a bunch of animals yeah. sleeping. <laughs> so very well said, but I put it simply. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what you see in a zoo is what you see. But what you see at the Discovery Channel is you discover. Right. Because they don't show you the things what you see in the zoo, but they show you something which is you are discovering. And today mm -hmm. the customers wants to discover. Yeah. That's and when they want to discover, everything else has to be neutral and simple. So when, it so comes when to that somebody coming to your yeah. hotel, mm -hmm. a city hotel, the guest in a city hotel anywhere in the world, besides sleeping time, do not stay more than four hours in a room. Mm -hmm. When the guest is coming to your restaurant, if it is a fine dining, it is we are talking about 120 minutes. Otherwise, it's 90 minutes. So we're talking about 120 minutes. And he's engrossing in a conversation with his colleague or anyone. Very rarely the person is alone. And when he's doing that, he wants things to be very simple. Mm -hmm. And that is what we create through our design and management of service processes. Excellent. The last thing I want to ask you uh, about before we wrap up today is uh, the book really starts about how your roots affect your point of view in the uh, entire world. How can we utilize our own points of view from the way we were raised, the culture we were in, maybe the religion we were brought up, the foods that we taught that we eat to kind of shape how we're going to go forward, both relying on the way we grew up, but also being open enough to expose ourselves to all of these amazing things around the world that we may not be familiar with? Roots are, Glenn, very important. And the world is going vegan, so roots are becoming more important. That was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> the vegetable. Yeah. But yeah. what I'm saying is roots are very important, irrespective of the religion, yeah. right. irrespective of the culture, irrespective of any part where. Because what roots tell you is keeps you grounded. Mm -hmm. Because many times where I have failed, I failed because I forgot who I was and I became arrogant and I became somebody. It was difficult for me to recognize who I was and then I failed. Right. It should never happen that you should not know who you are. And the essential part of knowing who you are is your roots. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that's so, that's so important to completely embrace who you are and be okay with that right i mean that's a yes. that's a big thing i would think because if we don't embrace who we are and where we're from then we might not have as much confidence going into a situation which could lead us down the road of copying other people instead of focusing on what we know is true internally and that'll keep us from building our career and innovating all of those things that you've managed to do so successfully yeah beautiful so how can we find the book I think the book is is a great motivation for everybody mm -hmm. to understand why failures are painful. Yep. The book is a great read for people to understand not what Deepak Kori is all about or what creativity and innovation is all about. This book is everybody's story. Yes. In one way or the other. So I urge everyone to read it. And what this book tells you to stay humble and help people who you can help. So we should always help. And when we help and when we edu educate people, this world will be a better world for our future generation and for our future leaders. And this is what we are living for. And this is what, as a professional, we need to do. Because the better future is not a bridge, not too far. Beautiful. I love it. Deepak Ori, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And we'll uh, hopefully get to see you again soon sometime. One day, my goal is to get to uh, Bangkok and maybe have a drink. Oh, I'm right looking there. forward to meeting you, Glenn. Thank you One so day. much. One day. One day. Thank you, sir. A bridge I not too far. I see you in Bangkok. I love it. It's not a bridge too far, especially since there's so many more flights these days, right? Everything's back to uh, the way it used to be. Make sure you get out there, travel, have those new experiences. But most importantly, the lessons that we learned today, you really need to trust yourself. Know who you are. Don't let others out there influence the decisions that are going to be a big deal in your life. The world is filled with a lot of people that are going to tell you no. 
but it's important. It's essential to keep that spirit of yes alive with you in order to continue to be successful. And that's why I love reading A Bridge Not Too Far, all about where creativity creativity meets innovation. Again, find that at Amazon.com. Speaking about finding things, why not give us a listen? You can find us at Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you get your shows. We are there. And of course, if you're listening to us right now, why not give us a watch? Find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, all shows are at NoVacancyNews.com. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. Remember, you've got one life, so blaze on. And thanks for thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow.